Welcome to another edition of the Morning Devotional. My name is Pastor William Hill. I'm the pastor of Providence Presbyterian Church located in Evansville, Indiana. If you'd like to find out more information about the church, you can visit our website. That information will be available to you at the end of the video. If these videos have been helpful to you, if you have enjoyed or benefited in some way from these devotionals, uh, whether it's the ones through the Westminster Confession of Faith or the other seven seasons that I've done over the last few years. Perhaps you uh, wouldn't mind sharing uh, these um, with others, uh, email or, or um, text the link to them. However, you can do that. You can share it very easily um, there at the bottom of the video. There's an option to share it. And I would very much appreciate it. It's not required, of course. Um, I don't do this for uh, uh, for those reasons, but uh, um, anyway, if it has benefited you, um, perhaps you'd be uh, so kind to do that. Today we come to uh, chapter 17. We begin uh, chapter 17. We're going to look at the first paragraph. We're dealing with now with the doctrine of perseverance or the perseverance of the saints. Let's pray first and then we'll consider these things together. Father, as we come once again to your word and we come to understand it, indeed, as we read it, we pray that your spirit would teach us and guide us. Uh, we know that we are in desperate need of your guidance, your instruction, if we're to understand that which you have given to us in your word. And so we pray that we would mine the deep treasures that are herein and contained in that which is inspired and infallible and inerrant. We pray, Lord, that you would forgive us for our sins. You would cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And you would help us now as we consider this important doctrine that it might encourage us as we walk with you. We pray for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, we come to paragraph number one of chapter 17 of the Perseverance of the Saints. There we read, They whom God hath accepted in his beloved effectually called and sanctified by his Spirit, can neither totally nor finally fall away from the state of grace, but shall certainly persevere therein to the end and be eternally saved. Now, of course, the question comes, what is perseverance? Well, that's continuing in a course of action regardless of circumstances. Uh, you know and I know the Christian life, it's not always easy. There's many uh, things that happen to us, many roadblocks that present itself, many pitfalls, many twists and turns to the Christian life as we pilgrim in that journey to our heavenly rest. But we must indeed persevere. We must persevere to the very end. And we read there in the opening words of the um, paragraph something of comfort and hope to us because, again, this matter is rooted in the very promise of the God of heaven. Notice the qualifier, how it's qualified. Those, they whom God hath accepted in his beloved, effectually called and sanctified by his Spirit, can neither totally nor finally fall away from the state of grace. This is simply to say that those who truly know and love the Lord Jesus Christ are being sanctified by the work of the Holy Spirit. That same Spirit will continue to work in you to bring you to that heavenly rest, that end that we all long for and desire. If we think of it this way as a process, so we think about the effectual call of God upon the life of the sinner, that is which that call that 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 works faith in the dead sinner makes him alive regenerates him and then he believes by faith alone in Christ alone and all that he has done justification they are then adopted into the very family of God and they are being sanctified day after day being made more and more able to say no to sin and yes to righteousness well those people will indeed receive that final end that hope and that is of course glorification regardless of the circumstances regardless of the matters that come to us throughout the course of our lives the pitfalls the difficulties the dangers the struggles the ups and downs of the Christian experience we will never ever be lost and the Apostle Paul writing to the church at Philippi he says as much to them and 
a people that were facing uh, various challenges there in that city. But in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day, um, the day of Jesus Christ. And so that work that's begun in us, that effectual calling, that work of justification, adoption, sanctification, all of that work will indeed be completed at some point in which we are glorified and made as Christ. We will see him, be like him, and be ever with him for all of eternity. But of course, we must remember that this is not an assurance that comes to us. It's not an encouragement that comes so that we might grow lazy in the Christian life. It is not a call to us to simply let go and let God and we'll just happily coast along, not giving a care or wit, uh, uh, giving one care to our soul in any way, shape, or form. But no, this perseverance and this promise of hope of perseverance should also cause us then therefore to work diligently to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Because we know that as we do so and we experience the various temptations of this life, as we continue to strive to do all that God has commanded us, we don't do it because it merits anything from God. We've already discussed that from chapter 16. But we do it as a response to God's kindness to us. And we want to serve Him. And while we know that we will never do so perfectly, that we are unprofitable servants, we'll fall short of God's glory, we're reminded of what Jesus Himself says, In John chapter 10 and verse 28, I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. That is to say that whatever circumstance you you find yourself, whatever matter of life or difficulty you experience, that can't remove you from the love of God that is found in Christ. You will never be lost. We think of the life of David, a man who the scriptures describe as a man after God's own heart, but yet he fell into grievous sin. He fell into a terrible situation of which he even resisted the very Spirit of God for at least nine months. And not until he was confronted by Nathan the prophet did he repent of his sin and, can, and, and, and find forgiveness in God. And he persevered. He continued to move forward, but we know that that perseverance was rooted in the Spirit of God. He would not let him go, no matter how hard he may have tried to escape that grip of the Spirit. He was unable to escape, and he continued to persevere even to the end. And so this is a both-and scenario. Uh, God will indeed persevere us to the end, but we also need to remember that we have responsibilities We must be diligent in this calling that has been placed upon our lives. And Peter, the Apostle Peter, in 2 Peter 1, and verse 10, says, Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to make your calling and election sure. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. And so we must indeed be diligent to use the means that God has given to us to help us persevere. Now, Chad Van Dixorn, in his fine, fine commentary, um, he, he speaks to these matters probably a little more eloquently than I do or have. And he says here, related to the question of what God will do, we read, or he writes, Yet every Christian knows that we sometimes stumble, and some have discovered by bitter experience that if we neglect to light our path with the lamp of God's word, we will lose our way. The Word of God is living and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's given to us as a light unto our path, a, a light unto our feet to help us that we might not wander in darkness. It matters very much how we walk before our God. He never once encourages us to take His promises as excuses for carelessness. Churches in the Reformation tradition have never taught a bare doctrine of preservation. They affirm a biblical doctrine of perseverance. We should offer no encouragement, he says, to the idea that those people are Christians who confessed Christ as their Savior at one moment and then live a life of disobedience at every other. 
He goes on to say that we must be clear about this. After all, while the Bible does not teach us that there is such a thing as a carnal Christian, it does warn us that a person may confess Christ falsely and eventually fall away. We need to call today's worldly Christians to trust in Christ and repent of their sins. And that's why the paragraph says what it says and the way it says it. It says that they whom God hath accepted in his beloved, effectually called and sanctified by his spirit, can neither, can neither, can neither totally nor finally fall away from the state of grace. That is to say, those who are truly united to Christ, they, you cannot lose it. And indeed, you will, because of the work of the Spirit, you will persevere to do the things with diligence to make your calling and election sure. You are not in a state of coasting right into glory. You are now in a state of working diligently uh, to make your calling and election sure. Regardless of the ups and downs of the Christian experience, you continue to press forward for the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. This is the biblical doctrine of perseverance. And it's one that Christians need to lay hold of and recognize with, uh, with vigor that this is what the Bible teaches about all those who are called according to God's most holy purpose. Well, I trust these times are helpful for you. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave me a note. The way to reach me is there before you on the screen. And so until the Wednesday edition, when we continue looking at chapter number, chapter 17, um, the perseverance of the saints. May the Lord help you today. May you read his word. May you meditate upon it. And may you seek to do all that you read. God bless.